Dodge Cat here again and today we're going to talk about birds nests. We're just getting into the time of year that birds are thinking of nesting. Some of the bigger species of course already actively nesting like um, herons and ravens and things like this but the smaller birds will be waiting a little while longer until it's properly warmed up. They try to um, coordinate their breeding so that there are caterpillars hatching when the young need feeding most so they'll be taking a little longer. It's also a very good time of year to see birds nests because the tre trees and the hedges aren't covered in leaves yet so you can quite often spot nests in the hedges tucked away and it's always worth watching to see if they get used again. So very interesting subject birds nests. They perform two functions used only in the breeding season of course and they're there to provide protection for the eggs so quite often making a platform so the eggs and chicks are out of reach of predators or hidden from predators and also as insulation so that the body warmth of the mother bird incubating the egg sometimes the father bird as well um, is absorbed into the lining of the nest and rebounds onto the eggs so they don't get chilled from underneath and the wind doesn't get to them and any frost or untoward things like that so it keeps them nice and cosy but only time of year birds will use nests is of course when they're breeding the rest of the time once they've fledged they don't use them at all so we've got several for you to look at and some different nest building techniques to think about of course a lot of birds don't build a nest at all um, most of the waders are ground nesters and they don't really do very much in the way of nest building the idea is they find their suitable nest site and they scrabble around a bit until there's a bit they like and having chosen that as a nest site as they move away from the nest or around the nest they'll be picking up things and flicking it sideways and they just sort of throw it with their beak sideways into their chosen nesting site sort of like that and they move around a little more throw a couple more bits until they've made a bit of a platform it's sometimes really no more than an apology things like ring-necked plovers that nest in shingly areas all they really do is scrut around a bit and make a little depression any lining they do will be whatever is in the area around so maybe some very small pebbles or if you're something like a stone curlew and you're nesting on the Breckland where there really isn't very much at all it's more like a desert they make do with lining their nests with flint flakes and rabbit droppings because that's they use what they have available so all they're doing is moving around flicking things into this sort of heap and then they'll settle into it and move around a bit body of the bird moving around just to make a sort of cup shape so once they've made their sort of platform or whatever whatever they're making the bird will settle onto the nest with its breast downwards and move around in the nest just to make that cup shape secure for the eggs and they might do a bit of sideways fiddling usually um, with their beak they, they go sideways and sort of pulling things in like that so that's all they would be doing to protect their nest a lot of birds try a bit harder and might make a more elaborate nest perhaps right in the bottom of a tussock um, some of the the warblers like to nest low down and they'll be in grass roots and tussocks uh, the pipits also will be looking for a clump of grass they can they can really get into so maybe somewhere like under here or perhaps somewhere that a, a vole or a mouse has started a bit of a burrow and they can tuck their nest away and really all you'll see of the bird is is beady little eye looking at you um, you can't see the nest at all of course it doesn't protect them against things like stoats and weasels but it's it's good protection from overhead predation from from raptors so that's their preferred way of doing it 
most of the birds you see in your garden will be making a bit more of an effort, making more of a cup-shaped nest which holds the eggs and keeps them nice and safe and has a good lining to keep them warm. So we'll have a look at some of those. So this is the nest of one of our most popular garden birds. This is a robin's nest. And this one was built on a shelf in our garage. Robins typically breed in all sorts of places. Um, you know, the traditional picture of them with the, in an old kettle in the hedge or something. But they like to be in a building if they, if they can find somewhere. Keeps them nice and sheltered. A friend of mine had one through their bedroom window and nesting in the bookshelves. And it brought off a good brood of four chicks behind the books in their bookshelf. Um, a bit disturbing. It was in their bedroom, so it used to come in and out very early in the morning and slightly disturbing, but they were absolutely charmed to have it. This one in the garage, um, it's not quite typical. It, as you can see, it's got a rather square edge, and this is because it built it in the corner of a box. But it's typical robin materials. There's quite a lot of moss in it. There's hair, there's leaves, there's bits and pieces, and a nice cosy little cup for the eggs to be in. And this one had five chicks in it. So by the time they fledged, they were really quite squashed together. But the idea is that the, the nest is just big enough for the bird to cover the whole thing when it's sitting, so the eggs don't get chilled. This was a blue tit's nest, one of the most common garden birds to, to build nests in gardens. Um, and often, of course, in nest boxes. Nests you find in nest boxes are usually a bit more spread than this and quite often will be asymmetrical. This one was actually in, in, in a neat hole in a tree, so it's quite a neat little nest. And as you can see, it's got bits of moss, it's got bits of grass, and it's quite nicely lined with feathers. Again, for the insulation to keep the little birds nice and warm. And a blue tit will raise six, seven, maybe even eight chicks um, in a tiny nest like this. But because, because they're in a box or a hole, by the time they're getting bigger, they can sit on the edges and they're not in danger of falling out. Of course, hole nesting birds will choose their sites with an appropriate sized hole in them um, to avoid larger predators getting in. So if you're putting up a nest box for something like blue tits, it would be a 28 millimetre hole. And for great tits and sparrows, it would be a 32 millimetre hole. Coal tits rarely use a nest box. They prefer to make less low down and they'll be in a, maybe even in a mouse hole or a, a, tree, a tree hole between the roots. Um, nut hatches will adapt tree holes by plastering around the hole with mud. And both sexes will will help with the plastering process. So it's not completely plastered over like hornbills and things do, but it reduces the size of the hole to the size the nut hatch wants, which again is about 32 millimeters. So always nice to see birds using your, your nest boxes. And when the nesting season is well over, you can check them out and have a look at how cleverly they've built them. This is a great tit nest. And this one shows rather well the asymmetric form you get when it's built in a nest box. So you can see it's got quite a corner on it. Slightly bigger bird, so it's a slightly bigger nest, but very similar in construction. Um, this one's used a few little bits of lichen around the edges. They will bring all sorts of things into the nest, including um, the flower heads of lavender and things, which possibly help them keep the nest insect free. Um, it's not home decorating, it's just a form of sanitization. But if you've got lavender bushes and you see great tits, blue tits, starlings picking off the flower heads, they're not just being vandals. What they're doing is a bit of aromatherapy in their nest. Nests, of course, can get quite populated by um, bird lice, um, different insects will come in and they want to keep those away as long as they possibly can. A lot of these small birds will use the same nest to bring up more than one brood in the summer. So the cleaner 
and sweeter the nest is, the better, the better for the chicks. This is one of my favourites. This is a chaffinch nest and it does look terribly small if you think of the size of a chaffinch, but again, it's so the bird can cover all the eggs properly. Chaffinches will normally nest um, in, a, in a tree or bush and the nest will be up against the trunk of the tree or a fairly upright part of the bush and they make a very neat tidy nest. It's all lovely little mossy thing, very carefully formed, um, spiders webs and lichens and decorating the edges and neatly lined again. Um, goldfinch nests are similar but quite often further out from the tree trunk, more, more towards the external branches. So that's one way of telling what bird has made your nest, is, is where it's put it. Um, Greenfinches make a slightly larger nest and a bit more untidy. And bullfinches usually use um, rootlets to make their nests, so it'll be more blacks and browns without the, uh, the nice mossy um, mossy covering, but that's an, I think an absolutely perfect nest. It looks almost like somebody's made it to sell in one of these um, fancy home decorating shops. You could you can imagine actually nesting in it yourself. Nice and deep, nice and safe for the chicks. This one's a dunnock's nest. This is another very familiar garden bird. This is a little skulking grey black one with a very fine beak. You see maybe under your bird feeders or under hedges and along rockeries and they build a slightly more ne messy nest and it'll be quite low down. So they like um, maybe a couple of feet up in a hedge, maybe just a foot up. Um, and it's mostly, it's really mostly mosses. It's got a, started off with twigs and then it's been completely covered in the mosses and bits of grass and lined again with a little bit of feather here and there. This one was a predated nest, so the eggs were taken by um, maybe a weasel or a rat and you can see in the bottom of the nest there are a few eggshell fragments left and it was abandoned after that. Sometimes birds will use the same nest after a predation incident but more often they'll go away and build somewhere safer. So obviously this wasn't in the best chosen place and uh, maybe a stoat or a weasel um, took the eggs. But it's, you can see from the colour of the eggs that it was done. It's, they have these very turquoisey blue eggs. It's a rather larger nest and this is a blackbird nest and it chose quite an unusual place to build it. This was a, a, an artificial swallow nest I put up in lean-to and the swallows ignored it completely but the blackbirds had a marvellous time building this wonderful nest in the top of it. They didn't use it so it's not really quite finished. Usually a blackbird will line the inside of its nest with mud which it then shuffles round in to make it nice and smooth and just the shape for the bird to incubate its, its eggs. Song thrushes take it a step further and they'll actually line it almost with a homemade woodcrete. They, they use a rotting bits of, um, bits of wood pulp and mud mixed with their own saliva to make a lovely smooth lining and then they paddle around in it and wriggle about until it's lovely and smooth and they're the only bird that does that. So if you find a bird nest that is lined so beautifully, chances are it's a song thrush. Um, you can see in the construction of this one, um, it's been twigs, roots, grasses, and a bit of mud used in the construction. And this one's my absolute favorite. This is the nest of a long-tailed tit. And they have these wonderful barrel-shaped nests, which are made almost entirely out of cobwebs, mosses and lichens and then thoroughly lined and padded with feathers. These are absolutely wonderful little birds. You can see why um, medieval times and later they were known as bum barrels because 
the nest looks like a little barrel. The thing is designed to expand. Cobwebs are quite stretchy and slightly adhesive, so they hold the thing together as it grows a bit bigger as the chicks grow up. And it's quite important if you're a, if you're a long-tailed tit because by the time they fledge, they do have the long tails. So inside that nest will be seven or eight long-tailed tit chicks with their long tails folded up over their backs so they all fit in. And it's a wonderful, light as a feather, feather-lined, cosy little home with that wonderful stretchiness to it. You can see the holes usually in the side, but if you put your finger into it, you can actually feel how warm it is. Those are absolutely wonderful um, piece of architecture. If you think of them building it only with their little beaks to help them. All of these desks, of course, have been abandoned. They're finished with. Um, it's not really a good idea to take bird's nests out of hedges and things because they can be reused, sometimes by the same species and sometimes by other species. So please leave them where they are. These ones are a collection I've had for a while that is part of a, the educational um, gear, if you like. Um, but normally I would leave them be. So we're just going to have a look now about um, about how the bird actually makes one of these cup-shaped nests. And this is a little bit here that was a started off nest that never got finished. So it could have been almost any, anything. There's no way of knowing what bird it was, but it's never got to any sort of completion. So we can have a look at that and tell how the bird has done it. So we'll just have a bit of a go and see how difficult it is to build a nest. And I've got no guarantees how this is going to turn out. So this is a suitable nest cup of a pruned tree. And the bird would start out by putting a fairly random bit of twigs into it to make a base. It would then find some nice dead grasses it's not gonna work. as you can see making a bird's nest is an awful lot more difficult than it looks um, even with two hands um, I can't come up with anything near the perfection of, of a proper bird's nest but I will be putting out things to help them line their nests, so some nice little feathers and things that they can take in with them, and encouraging them to use places in our garden to build a nest of their own. Um, I don't think they'd thank me if I tried building nests for them. Of course, the most important thing for nesting birds is that they have somewhere safe to build their nests. And one of the ways you can help them best is to join Shropshire Wildlife Trust and make sure that our reserves are there with plenty of safe nesting places, plenty of nesting materials available. So the birds are out there in the countryside, in the wild, doing what they should be doing. They'll always go for a natural site over a nest box if they can possibly find one. So let's make sure there's plenty available for them. 